Hi, I'm Matt Shadetech. I'm a producer and DJ based in Brooklyn, New York. I'm also the senior logic instructor for DubSpot and for DubSpot Online. In this video, we're gonna take a look at some of the new MIDI processing functionality, which has been added in Logic Pro X. For those of us who've been using Logic for a long time, this is a pretty exciting new set of tools they've added for us. Those of you guys who have checked out some of my previous videos on the DubSpot channel may have seen some of the stuff that I've done using the environment. And the environment can be a great and really versatile tool for creating interesting MIDI processing, but it's not for everybody. There's a pretty steep learning curve attached to it and it's not that easy to use. Now we've got a lot of the functionality that we would have had to go to the environment before included in these new MIDI plugins over here. You'll see one of the changes to Logic Pro X is that we now have this MIDI effects slot which has been added to every software instrument channel strip. So I've created a little example track here. I'll just play that for you and then we'll get into the tutorial. All right, so one thing about this video, I'm gonna go through a couple of things. I'm not gonna go in super detail on each of them. I just wanna kind of give you a quick overview of a few of the new tools to kind of get you going and give you some workflow ideas so that you can dig in on your own. One little extra bonus thing that I'll throw for you guys that was really driving me crazy last night when I was making this beat is if you guys have seen some of my previous videos, like my drum programming video, you know that I like to edit the grid division a lot to make parts like these kind of, these rolling hi-hat parts, right? If When you first open the program, you've got this. No grid division in sight. And I was getting, it's really hard to find in the manual. I was getting really frustrated, which hasn't happened for me for a long time in Logic. But if you go down to this custom view here for what they're calling the LCD, this new info view here, then it gets back to something that's a lot more familiar for us Logic 9 users. And there's that grid division. So just a little, little bonus tip for you there before we get into the MIDI plugins. Okay, so with this track, I started out with this little saw wave bass progression. And then I wanted to create a little arpeggio to go with it and to test out the new arpeggiator functionality. And that's down here. Now, if you look at the piano roll here, you can see not a lot going on. We've just got this one note running through the whole sequence. Yet, if you listen, you know, there's a, a more complex output happening from that one note of input. And that is due to these new MIDI plugins that have been added in Logic 10 or Logic X. So if we take a look over here, this is the new MIDI plugin area, and I'm using two plugins. I'm using the chord trigger and an arpeggiator. So let's just actually turn off the arpeggiator for a second. And so what I'm doing is I'm using this chord trigger to play a single note, I'll just play something on my MIDI controller here. And what you can see is now you can play a single note and have multiple notes be output, right? So I'm playing C and then we're getting this four note chord coming out. Now, previously we would have had to do this in the environment using the chord memorizer object. 
Now we've got it as a MIDI plugin. It's a lot easier to use and really helpful. It comes with a whole bunch of nice presets here to get us started with some chords. And of course, you can customize it and input your own chords. I'm using this suspended preset here. Now, what I've got that doing is that is running into the arpeggiator, right? So we've got this, this single chord thing going on. Then we turn on the arpeggiator and it breaks up that chord into individual notes and plays them in sequence, which is what an arpeggiator does normally. Now, but you can hear, right, it doesn't sound exactly like a regular arpeggiator. If we open it up, we'll see that we've got some cool stuff going on in here. So some of the basics, right, that we're familiar with from an arpeggiator, we've got the rate control here. Here I've got it set to 30 second notes. I'm actually running at a pretty low tempo, which is 65, which is why I got it cranked all the way up. And that was because I was experimenting with some other stuff that I needed to change. Normally I would do this at 130, um, but I had to change the project tempo. And so we can play with the rate, right? How fast the arpeggio is going. Getting really slow there. And we can also manipulate the note order, right? So in this case, we could have it playing the chord going up in the pitch or going down in pitch. This is up and down. This is what they're calling outside in, which means it plays the highest note, then the lowest note, then the middle note if it's a triad, or it just goes through them in order if there's more notes than that. We've got random here with the little shuffle icon, and then we've got the order that they were played, right? So if you roll the chord, you don't just play them all simultaneously. This will respect the order that you played them in. We've also got these variation controls over here. This is kind of interesting where it'll start to mix up the order. It'll play the second note first or the first note second and so on. There's a couple different settings here. And then we've got the octave range. This was something we had in the previous arpeggiator where we can just say play the same arpeggio in different octaves, right? So here it'll play it in the original octave and then an octave up. And here it'll do the same thing plus an additional octave up and so on. And so this, this kind of stuff, this is pretty familiar basic arpeggiator stuff, right? We've seen this before in a lot of arpeggiators. The part that I'm really loving about this new arpeggiator is this pattern area down here. And especially this little grid mode where we can edit the rhythm and the velocity of the arpeggiator. So one of my big problems with arpeggiators in general is that you just get this kind of monotonous rhythm, right? boo dee boo dee boo dee It really gets pretty repetitive pretty quickly because all the notes are the same length and there's no rests, right? It's just continuous notes. Well, now we have the option to kind of sequence a little bit. So here, right, we can turn off steps. Or my favorite is that we can now add tied notes. So we can, if we, let's say I just get rid of this, I can start to add a note and I can drag to change the length, right? So we can adjust how long we want each step to be in addition to how high or low the velocity is, which is what the up and down axis is here. Uh, we can also change the length of the pattern if I wanted to have it just do four or something much longer if I want to get more complex, but this is working pretty nicely for me right here. Now, what you'll hear if I play my sequence, Right? You may notice the note order is changing for that last note, right? And so the way I'm doing that is with automation. And this is the other thing that I love about having this in a plugin format now is that it responds to regular automation. In the past, we would have had to do it with MIDI CC data in the environment, and it would have been a, you know, a more involved process. Here now, all we have to do is we just switch on latch, play the sequence, and just click the different orders that we want, and then we can see that has now been written as regular automation data like we would have in any other plugin in Logic. So that is just super cool to me. Just makes it a lot more fluid, you can be a lot more creative with it and worry less about the technology. The last thing I'm gonna show you guys is over here, this little kind of funky 808 Tom roll that I have. with the weird pitching to it right now. Of course, there's a lot of ways we could do this. We could do it in the EXS24, which is what I'm using to play this back. We could do it using, just do it live with the pitch bend on our MIDI controller. But the way I'm doing it here 
is with this new modulator MIDI plugin, right? And the way that you load any of these is you just click on this little menu here and then just choose from the list. I'm choosing this modulator. And if we open it up, we'll see that we've got two things in here. We've got an LFO, a low frequency oscillator, and an envelope, and these are both generating control signals. Now, for those of you guys who have used synthesizers, you're gonna be familiar with this for assigning an LFO to the cutoff or something like that. But here now we can assign an LFO to a MIDI parameter, right? So you can see down here, I'm assigning it to the pitch bend for my EXS24 for my tom sound, right? So now it's sending this wave shape as a pitch bend and you can set the rate down here. I set the rate to one bar and it can, using this little option here, we can sync to the master clock, which is great. And I'm then using the symmetry control here to change the wave shape and to really get a nice precise pattern that I want. So in this case, I've got it, let's jump back. So it's kind of sweeping down, then sweeping up, then then sweeping back up again before we roll into the next section of the beat. And what's really cool if you watch the, this little display down here is as I adjust this, we get this kind of we get this kind of real-time feedback on what the LFO is actually doing and, and we can kind of see that visually, which is really a lot of fun. We've also got an envelope here. The envelope can actually modulate the LFO rate. There's just a ton of cool creative possibilities here that I really can't wait to dig into more deeply. And so if you'd like to learn more about me, you can check me out at mattshatech.com and my album, The Empire Never Ended, is out on iTunes if you want to check out some of my music. And if you'd like to learn more about Logic, you can check us out at DubSpot. We offer courses at our school in New York City, and we also offer an online course, and you can learn more about that at dubspot.com. I'm going to be back soon with some more Logic Pro X tutorials as I dig deeper into the program and learn all the new stuff they've added. But in the meantime, hopefully this gives you something to play around with and start to get your own hands dirty as well. So have fun, and thanks for watching. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.